Let's close our eyes. We'll have time of prayer. Uh, as we pray, may we really pray, Lord. You called us, and you know who we are. Sometimes we're so weak. We're going through so much trouble and pain. But today we dedicate our time and our space here at the church. So let us hear you. And may you break all the f o r c e of darkness and bring our focus to your word. Father, may you work in us, fill us with the Holy Spirit. Let us experience power of the word that transcend my time and space. Let's all close our eyes and let's all have time of prayer. Let's pray one more time for the person who sits next to you. That person came here because they need the grace of God. They need the mercy of God. They need compassion of God. They need to hear the word. And they're here for the healing. And God only can take care of them. So have them in your prayer. person right next to you, have them in your prayer. Lord, speak to their heart. Speak to their soul. Let them be renewed in Christ. As they dive into the depth of Jesus, renew their life, renew their heart, renew their soul, renew them with the power of Christ. Let's all pray. For the person next to you, let's all pray together. pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can we bless each other? God bless you. One more time, God bless you. Bless them one more time. God is with you. He's always with you. Bless them one more time, even when you forget. God is with you. Bless them one more time. Don't be scared. God is with you. Do not worry. God is with you. It's okay. God is with you. I'm okay. You're okay. Everything's okay. God is with us. Do you guys believe God is with you? Amen. Because Christ is everything, evangelism is everything. Because Christ is enough, evangelism is enough. Because Christ is all, proclamation of Christ is all we need. When Christ is spoken to our hearts and our soul, if Christ is spoken to our situation, He will overcome my emotion. He will overcome my scars. He will overcome all. He will make everything on me as a platform to proclaim only the Christ. Christ is power, and Christ is life. We're not studying Christ, we're meeting Christ. We not only study Christ, we're enjoying Christ. We're proclaiming Christ. When we enjoy Christ, your weakness is not a problem to Him. Your problem is not a problem to Him. God called you, He chose you before even the creation of this world. Christ says, I'll be with you to the ends of the earth. If God is with you, there's no problem. We know sometimes we make my dad or our dad as a problem. We make our situation as an issue of our life. Maybe we make our husband or wife as a problem of this age. 
Sometimes you can, when you have kids, I met this woman this year, uh, yes, this week. She was complaining about her daughter and son. Everything, they, their kids were always a problem to her. Why? Because they don't do what she desired them to do. We make every little thing into problems when Christ could be the answer to all. Tell me if my kid is a problem to me. If I start to consider my daughter and my son as a problem, let's say they're eating my money every single day. They're not making money at all. They're not beneficial to me. They don't do anything for me. So if I start to keep complaining about my son and daughter, now that I am making them into the problem when they're not actually a problem at all, many times it's your thought and mind that makes something into problems. We worry a lot. We have so much anxieties. We have so much, uh, we are confused. We're getting mad. We're irritated. And we're easily stressed. And we're easily frustrated because nothing goes on my way. When Christ is spoken to you, that will be the end of your thought. That will be the end of your problem. When Christ is proclaimed to you, I met this guy, and we were having conversation. I was talking to him. I was questioning him some question. You know what? He couldn't answer me at all. Why? It was, he was right next in front of here, and I was here. I was talking to him. He was looking at me, but he couldn't answer me. Guess why? Because he was hearing thousand other voices, not only my voice, thousand other voices. From nowhere. That's why he couldn't answer me. He doesn't know what to answer. Because everyone, every single voice is hearing on his ears. What are we supposed to confess to him today? Jesus is a Christ, son of the living God. Jesus is a Christ, the answer to all. Are you scared to be with people? Are you scared to be alone? Are you scared of your parents? Are you scared of your future? Are you scared? Are you anxious? Because you worry you might fail later. You know what we confess? Jesus, you are the Christ, Son of the living God. Those who fear to be around people, they think everything's going to be okay when they're alone. When they're alone, they're full of problems. Those who want to be alone all the time, even when they're alone, even they're with people, they're still facing problems. Let me clarify this. Changing your environment and situation, simply changing your around, surround, will not be the answer to you. Many times we desire our parents to be replaced with better parents or our parents to be gone in our sight. But do you think you're going to be okay without your parents at all? Or do you think something's going to be better if you replace your parents with someone else? There will be still problems. What do we need? We need Christ. It's time for light to threaten the darkness. Time for Christ Make tremble Satan, make Satan tremble. Time for us to threaten the world with the power of the Christ. May you not be scared of the darkness. Do not be scared of Satan. Our Christ has overcome the world. Even in Colossians chapter 2, Christ has put the enemy on shame on the cross so that Satan cannot speak anything. Christ has overcome all. Oh, time for the light threaten the darkness. So yesterday, our kids, our remnants, went to USC to share the gospel. You know, USC is one of the prestige college. If you get into USC, everyone will clap at you. Great, you're there. You know, you're respected. That wherever you go, people might say, oh, you have a bright future. But now these little kids came up to USC student and saying, hey, you're like a fly. You need the gospel. 
how ridiculous it is. They might ask, hey, do you, do, what college do you go to? And we can answer, hey, I didn't even graduate high school. Or I don't even go to school. But now we're looking at them with different eyes. U.S. citizen, this is what I heard yesterday from the camp. One of the students told our remnant, hey, I believe in higher being, and I believe in crystal, and I believe in meditation. And she showed them crystal on her uh, wrist. And when I heard that, I started to imagine Thanos in Avengers. You have crystal on your rings and fingers. And I'm like, oh my God, the USC student wants to be Thanos with the crystals on their ring. What a shame. You know, I thought if you're in USC, you might have different level of thought, different level of dream. But now everyone wants to be Thanos with the crystals in their hands. They were making, they were acting like they know everything yet. You know who stupid is? Stupid is the one who acts like who knows everything. That's the most stupid person. All right. What we need is Christ. What we proclaim is Christ. Time for the light, threaten the darkness. Don't be scared of Satan. Don't be scared of your spiritual problems. Don't be scared of your parents. Don't be scared of any problem you thought that are the problem threatening your life because it's you threatening them. Satan is in fear. Satan is scared of you stepping into his territory. If we look at Isaiah chapter 40, Verse 3 to 5. A voice cries, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. This is what we do. Step into the camp. Step into the field. Step into your family. Step into your school. Step into your problem. You're making a highway in the desert area. Something no one can do, but you are called to do. Verse 4. Every valley shall be lifted up. And every mountain and hill be made low, the uneven ground shall become level, and the rough place a plain. Through you, by us. With the fact that God is with us. With the word that Jesus is a Christ. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Because the Lord has spoken, this will be fulfilled in your life. You are making a highway. You're making a way in the desert place. This is your, you are leaving a legacy of the gospel, not only for you, for your family. Not only for your family, for this country. Not only for this country, for 237 nation. And for our posterity that are coming after us. Our next generation will come after you. You will be their way. You will be their model. If you're going that way, I will follow you. You're not going to instantly come follow me. They will see the value in you. You guys are making a legacy of the gospel of this age. You guys are very needed. Amen? Don't lose your pride in Christ. Build your pride stronger and stronger. And don't let, it, don't let anything to shake your pride. I know there will be a ton of tons of content that try to threaten and that try to make fun of your content, but they will know what you have is the truth. They will know what you have is the way. They will know what you have is the life. Because crystals on your hands will be gone soon when Christ in your heart will stay everlasting. This is our pride. Can, you, can we do this all together? This is who we are, okay? I'm a child of God. I'm an evangelist, okay? You know who I am, right? This is who we are. A shoulder going up, right? You know when you're getting a good car, you know when you get off a good car, your shoulders are already up like this, right? So this is who you are. I have, I'm, I have Christ. I'm a child of God, right? This is, I'm, I'm much better than any of you. Any students in the world, this is our pride. I have Christ. 
right? Our shoulder is up here. <clears throat> This is what God commanded Israel, which is really ridiculous. I want to say it's a ridiculous commandment. God told the Israel to make a tabernacle in the wilderness. All right, now this is our question. Lord, aren't you looking at my situation? Do you think we have time to make tabernacle? All right, it would make sense if you gave us enough to build a tabernacle that we will surely do it. But look at us. We're financially broke. We're bankrupt. We have nothing. We need to think about what to eat tomorrow. This lunch and breakfast, dinner, I don't know what to eat. I don't see any source around me that can make my life better. But now you're telling me, make a tabernacle. You know what you don't know but God knows? He knows what we need more than you know what you need. He always provides us the best thing when we're asking him the worst thing all the time. He knows what we need. This tabernacle is not simply a building or a gathering place. This tabernacle is authority of Christ. And this tabernacle is a symbol of our faith. This tabernacle is a contents of our living. This tabernacle is our proof, our evidence that God is with us. Through this tabernacle, what we do in the wilderness is what someone, no one has done. In the, through the tabernacle in the wilderness, we are proclaiming Christ. from beginning to the end for 40 years. Now God is preparing us to proclaim Christ for 40 years in the wilderness. Wilderness is a place where we could walk, walk through only in two weeks. God is telling us to walk through for 40 years. Why? Every single spot of the wilderness, every single spot of your life, let Christ be proclaimed. Let tabernacle be there, stand there as a light and hope to so many who are dying. Let no one be missing. May you come to every little person, every single person who are dying, who are lost because no one's looking for them. 40 years, make the tabernacle, leave center around the tabernacle. This is what's going to happen in the tabernacle. I thought I'm not enough to break the force of darkness because I don't, have even, I don't even have things to eat and drink. But when you're building the tabernacle, regardless of your financial status, regardless of your education background, regardless of who you are, because of who he is, he will break forces of, forces of darkness. Amen? Wilderness Finally, the time came to you to break the darkness, to break the force of darkness, to cast out demons. In the tabernacle, what do we experience? We experience the death of Jesus, which brings death to the curses. Jesus brings death to all the calamities. Jesus brought death to all the problems we experienced in the tabernacle. What do we experience? We experience be fed without working. We experience miracles in the tabernacle. Wilderness, we thought we got to work hard to eat, but now in the tabernacle, no one starved to death because we are every day provided. Your curse will come to the end. Your calamities will come to the end. And Christ will resurrect in the hearts of you in the middle of the wilderness. People thought Israel will be gone because they're going into the wilderness. For 40 years, they were wandering, so they thought they will be, they will be disappeared. But what happened? Second generation arose. They started another journey to the Canaan. They split the river, Jordan River. 
They broke down Jericho. They experienced unprecedented, never repeated answer. The sun stopped, the moon stopped, and they conquered the land of Canaan. Where people think you're done, that's where God starts to work. Let's build our tabernacle. And you are the tabernacle in your wilderness. What's happening in our tabernacle? We are not lost, we found a way. We are not dead, we found a life. We are not confused because we are hearing the truth. In the tabernacle, we hear God's voice. We are not following what people tell me to do. We are following what God wants us to do. In the wilderness where you believe, it's, it's not, it doesn't make sense to build a tabernacle, but where you start to decide to follow the word of God. You'll experience Satan's gone, your curse is all blocked, and you'll find a way to do the word evangelization. This is authority of the tabernacle. What are you going to do today in the wilderness? Are you going to go after something to eat, or are you start to build tabernacle? Are you going to work so hard to make your life better, or are you going to let God start to work in you? Don't let Satan threaten my life, but let us have our opportunity to threaten Satan and make him tremble and make him go into fear. Let him run away from our tabernacle. Ridiculous commandment is what we need every single day. So this is my tabernacle. And my tabernacle is a proclamation of Jesus Christ. We proclaim Christ to myself. I know many of you are very self-centered. When you proclaim Christ, your self-centered, long-standing spiritual problem will be resolved. Amen? Are you scared of the problems that you have? They'll be gone when Christ is proclaimed. They'll be your platform when Christ is proclaimed. What will happen? My Nephilim. My Nephilim will be destroyed when Christ is proclaimed. I want to say this is your culture. This is what you enjoy. This is what you like. This might be your comfort zone. When Christ is proclaimed, your Nephilim will go death. And your Nephilim will go down when Christ is proclaimed. Not only that. We have built our Tower of Babel. Strong enough, tall enough. Doesn't know how to break. We built on it, and we were working on it. This will finally be broken. I met one of the parents outside of our church, and when she called me, she was, she was complaining about her daughter. And I asked her, why are you so mad about your daughter? They were mad because her daughter doesn't go to sleep early. Okay, how old is your daughter? She's 14. I told her, none of a 14 years old student go, sleep, uh, go to sleep early. But she's getting so mad. Why? Because her daughter doesn't listen to her. She was threatening her daughter. All right, now that you don't listen to me, you don't go to sleep early, wake up early tomorrow. If you don't wake up early tomorrow, you'll be dead. She was super mad because of her daughter didn't wake up early the next day. When she's mad, she did not simply say, oh, hi, I'm mad. She's not like this. She would curse her daughter, sorry in the morning. Guess what would you feel? The first word that you hear in the morning is F word. And if it is from your mom. 
daughter was going insane. You know why mom was getting super mad? There was simply one reason. Because she felt she was ignored by her daughter. You're not respecting me. You're ignoring me. That's why she was getting mad. Since she was young, it was her scar that she was abandoned by her grandparents and by her real biolog biological parents. That was her scar. She built a tower of Babel, which is called a scar, so tall and strong. She would work so hard to be acknowledged at the, in the society. She would work so hard at school for her to be accepted. But how come when everyone accepts me, you don't accept me when you're my daughter? Why are you ignoring me? So she was going insane. She would speak the cursing word every single day to her daughter. That was her Tower of Babel with full of scars, that needs to be destroyed. What is your scar? What is your Tower of Babel? I know some of you are saying, one day when I grow up, I'm going to kill my dad. Okay, if killing your dad can change your life, go ahead. But you know what? That will change your life into the jail. That can change anything. I'm going to kill my mom. Okay, great. Kill your mom and go to jail. You will regret alone. Many are living under scars and trauma. And that has become our Tower of Babel. That became our Nephilim. That became my own thoughts and worries. And we complain every single day with victim mentality. That's how Satan's working. Today, through your tabernacle, break all the force of darkness. Amen? Don't be fearful of what you have built. God can rebuild from the bottom. He will demolish all. He will reconstruct from the bottom. And His kingdom will reign upon your hearts and soul. There will be peace. There will be calm. There will be happiness and joy. There will be great gift in the tabernacle that we build today. When we proclaim Christ, we not only proclaim Christ to ourselves, we proclaim Christ to you. This is not the content that only saves me, but also this is content save all. Through the tabernacle that I built, through the proclamation of Christ, we are proclaim Christ to your wrong imprint. We are proclaim Christ to your wrong root. We are proclaim Christ to your wrong nature. I think it was David Ohm, the first person I had counseling when I first came to this church. He was only freshman. I think he was freshman or sophomore. And he was already in, in the depth of all kinds of problems and suffering and pain. He didn't know what to do. When we have worship, how, guess how many times he went to restroom? I thought his house is restroom. He had to go to restroom every single second. He couldn't you know, control himself. And he would go every single time. Then he would, not, he would not have time to listen to the message. But where is he today? Right there. He's not in the restroom anymore. He's there today. I remember Shinji. I thought Shinji rented this church. So whenever he comes here to worship, from the beginning he fell asleep. It's not even fell asleep. He decided, I'm going to go to sleep. He was all... <sighs> Anyone wake him up? He's like... Oh. When you proclaim Christ, that will destroy their imprint and root and nature. Christ is strong enough that does not require your power or your knowledge. Christ itself is strong and power and knowledge. And this will demolish all the opinion and arguments that are going against, the, against God. Christ 
is what it needs to be proclaimed to me and to you. This Christ that we have will be the proclamation to, to all. I really want, I really pray all of you to become an evangelist and missionary at your field. Through Christ that you proclaim, Christ will be proclaimed to 237 nations. Christ will proclaim to the next generation. Christ will be proclaimed to your school. Christ will proclaim to your family. Christ will proclaim to your work. You are very important. You are a VIP to God. So can we bless the person next to you one more time? You are very needed. Bless them one more time. You are God's one. You are God's need. So let's find our summit time. And you know I'm, I'm good at drawing, so I'm going to draw a picture. Find the minute of your day. Find the minute of Monday. Find the minute of Tuesday. Find the minute of Wednesday. Find one day a week. Find one day in another week. Find one day another week. Your ear, one ear will be your tabernacle. So the ear, one ear, another ear, another ear. You know what will happen? One summit time that you have, it will start to fill your hour. It will start to fill your thought. It will start to fill your mind. Your empty heart and your empty life will be filled with the summit time that you have once a day, that you have once a week, that you have once, once a year. One year in your life will be the two, second year and third year, and your empty soul will be filled with God and presence of the Word of God. 24 will take place. You will experience God is with you every single day. Through the one time, the one summit time that you have. Let it fill you from the bottom. Let your ear fill with the summit time with the Word of God. You will experience the power of 25. When kingdom of God comes upon you, it will change your thought. It will transform your mind. It will completely make, make you into a new new living being. God will create the new spiritual DNA in your heart. When the kingdom of God comes upon us, this will be the blessing of eternity. One minute a day will be another minute next day. It will be another day the next day. It will be another day the next day. One time that you have there will be another time, and third time, fourth time, one year, second year, third year, will fill 100 years of your life with a summit time. This will bring life to many, and you will be the model to 237 nation. So this week, let's resolute, Lord, let me have my summit time. A minute of a day, once a week, Maybe once a year, let me find your time in my life. And that will be the blessing of 24, 25, and eternal. You guys are Avengers. Need to destroy Thanos, right? We're going to Cal State. Northridge. What are we going to proclaim? We'll proclaim 
my tabernacle, and my Christ. Before going there, find your summit time. May you start your evangelism not there, but from where you are. Here, we break force of darkness. Here, we save them ahead of us. Before we go, let God work ahead of us. What are we going to experience? This might be the theme for our, our camp in this month. It's not only changing them, changing the field, but also it's changing my imprint, my root, and my nature. It will be a camp for my life. So if you have any time on Saturday, may you be in the camp with our remnants, and may you build a tabernacle at the wilderness in the field. Let the light of God shine, and let our light threaten Satan, and let our God stop curses that are supposed to come on every single person's life. So let you be the witness of Christ from now to the ends of the earth. So can we bless the person next to you one more time? You are the witness of Christ to the ends of the earth. Bless them one more time. Whatever who, uh, whoever you are, God called you as a witness to the end of the earth. Bless them one more time. Through you, many will come to the life. Bless them one more time. You are never God's mistake. You are God's masterpiece. Let's have time of prayer and we'll sing. Father, thank you so much that you have called us as a light to the world. Well, building a highway in the desert, building a highway in the wilderness. Many will come through it. Many will come to see. Father, to our knowledge, it's very ridiculous for us to build a tabernacle, but now that we have faith, what you told us to do is the best thing in our life. Through the power of Christ, break all the force of darkness. Through the power of Christ, break all the curses. Lord, may you become my way, my truth into my life. Father, in any situation, in any circumstance, may your tabernacle be my tabernacle. May the proclamation of Christ be fulfilled every single time in our lives. Let my self-centeredness broken. Let my Nephilim come down. May you bring my Tower of Babel that's filled with scars and trauma. We are very needed for people around us. We are your mystery to build your kingdom. We are your instruments to proclaim and praise you in any, any time and in any situation. We praise you. Let's all sing together. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think think your life, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me. You're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. For answers, far and wide, but I know we're all searching.
searching for answers Only you provide Cause you know just What we need before we Say a word You're the good, good Father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are I am loved by you It's who I am It's who I am
It's who you are. It's who you are. I am loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. for today. So, firstly, uh, please continue joining the North America Youth Evangelism School every two weeks at one o'clock on Zoom. And also, call drummers, please participate in the Evangelism School. And for the 10th Church Evangelism Camp, just as Pastor stated, it